Hi, I'm Ricky Fort and welcome to the Real Estate 101 podcast. Join me as I lift the lid on the real estate industry and share some great stories from behind the scenes. Like and subscribe and enjoy this episode. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Real Estate 101. I'm your host Ricky Fort from Geelong Real Estate Co. Sashin from Resolve Finance. I can't say your last name. It is... <laughs> Rob Luckin. Yeah, I was, I'm so Western. <laughs> I would never have got that, but um, mate... Welcome. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. First um, first broker on the show, so that's exciting. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll ruin it for everyone else, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I'm just conscious I, I don't want to come across like I've got like allegiances to anyone and, and you're the same. I think like being a professional in our industry, we have to work with everyone or we yes. get to work with everyone, sorry. Um, and it's, a, it's just a pleasure to have good relationships with good people and um yeah and hopefully we can share some stories today of course of course if you like them you prefer that's the best thing about it because you can trust that they're going to be looked after yeah that's the main thing yeah well, pretty much like and i've been saying for years i don't necessarily just recommend one person i'm sure you're the same i just give two or three names and numbers and be like hey these guys and girls won't let you down i don't get referral fees or kickbacks i just um they're just nice crew and they'll look after you yeah exactly so i found that works best and usually especially being a real estate agent, we've obviously got a pretty bad reputation that, um, yeah, we're not trustworthy or whatever. So I, I feel like just giving people options and just saying, look, do your own research or by all means get your own, but these these guys are good. So Yeah, yeah. Well, even even just saying, so I do want to help you like be part of it and, and give your readers or your listeners, I should say, yep. a bit more of a thing. So if uh, anybody sort of reaches out listening to this podcast, happy to give a $150 Visa gift card. Yep. Just saying, quote, Real Estate 101, Ricky Fort. So, and that's if obviously people want to reach out and get a quote on there, like, um, you know, if you can offer a better rate on credit cards, home loans, personal loans, Correct. whatever. So just mention the show and you get the gift card, which is cool. Um, obviously, I don't want to make it too, like, boring and, and basic about, like, um, you know, pumping up each other's tires <laughs> and what we do and all that sort of thing. But I guess, like, just give, like, a super high-level, non-salesy, um, difference between obviously why people should go to a broker versus a bank. Well, the main thing is it's a tailored tailored sort of issue. So the best way to sort of describe it is if you go to a bank, the only thing they can talk to you about is what they specialize in. Yep. So look, we'll, we won't mention banks, but if you go to a, a the black and red bank, yeah, all they can talk about is black and red products. Yep. Right. But with a broker, myself, we've got about thirty different banks on our panel. Yep. So we can tailor something that's going to be situated for everybody's situation. Yeah. You know, there may be someone who's just started a job and maybe is on probation or they've just started a business and only have six months trading. It just allows us that flexibility. It's funny, um, just to break that down, but I didn't realise there was such, um, like, just a unique, every bank, it's bizarre. You'd think every bank just more or less has the same things. But, yeah, if you've got someone who's, like, self-employed, yeah. like, just off the top of your head, who are really good for, like, what's the your most preferred or some of your most preferred banks to go to for people who are self-employed? Right. So they're actually not your top four. So yep. most of the self-employed will go through uh, your Blue Bays, your Blue Stones. Not really well known, but they 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 specialize in those products. So if they're not in your circle, you'd never come across them. Yep. The Trobe definitely is a, is a strong one. Yep. Um, those are the top three that I normally deal with yep. in those sort of situations. And then so people that have had like bad credit, bad credit's got like this such a bad stigma, but you know, if, if people have got credit issues, like who's a top two or three that that you go to yeah, yeah. Um, the banks that don't credit score so yep. AMP are really great my state are also really great in that space because they look at you based on your last 12 months or two yep. years obviously sometimes when you're 18 credit card you're like oh great this yeah. is fantastic and so you forget you get caught. Yeah, yeah exactly right what about like are there certain um, industries or employers that like benefit from other banks like if you're in emergency services or like federal government or oh, like yeah exactly right exactly right emergency services definitely but um, the main ones are professional so medico some banks offer some pretty great rates and like discounts in, in examples of two or three banks that are good yeah uh, Westpac are really good in that space because they offer for medical professionals yep. um, also health professionals as well 95% with no LMI yeah so lenders mortgage insurance when, yep. yeah which comes into play when you don't have that 5% deposit or yep. 20% deposit so yeah yeah do you find people come to you sometimes like you, as you said before you can the benefit of being a broker and I feel like nearly every broker spruiks the same thing but just that you know 
can put people onto a panel, but just say like, you know, I bank with Bendigo Bank, I used to work there or whatever. How often would someone come to you that banks with a particular bank and they think, oh, well, I'm going to go to the broker because he gives me more options and then you like just for whatever reason steer them back to the bank that they're like got all their shit with. Does yeah. that happen very yeah. often? Yeah, oh, look, it doesn't happen as often as you think, but sometimes it do. The most common would be a bridging sort yep. of scenario because they've already got everything with one bank. Yep. Um, most banks do allow for bridging, but that's, yeah. What's that program on. nowadays that you can um, type in like someone's bank account thing and it, it gives you access like and you can see everything? Oh, uh, bankstatements.com. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. So good. Yeah, it goes through. Even if you don't even don't even want to apply, just want to know where you're spending your money. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's such a that's fantastic a, That's tool. a pro hack. Let's, we'll make get that into a reel. So what, yeah. should, what, what is it and what, what can people do with it? Uh, it's bankstatements.com. Yeah. And what you do is you log in uh, as if you're logging into internet banking. Yeah. And it'll actually break down the last six months worth of transactions and actually break them into different categories. So if you're like, hey, end of the week, I've got no money, and you find out through this that you've been spending a thousand bucks a week on <laughs> takeaway food, takeaway food, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe not a thousand bucks a week, oh. but maybe a month. I I am pretty bad. The cost of living, man, it's just outrageous. Like, oh, it's insane. I um, I'm on the long blacks now, so you save a little bit on a long black. But if you're getting like a soy, whatever, it's like seven bucks, seven bucks fifty. Like you've got this big beast of a thing. Like it's outrageous. Oh, and it used to be a time when you could get them for a couple of dollars, and yeah. now I feel like you have to take out a mortgage just at a couple of it's coffee. Far, it's Isn't ridiculous. It? But yeah, if you're buying like, I start work early, so sometimes I'm I'll buy like banana bread or a croissant, <laughs> or hence like I've got the you know I'm trying to work on this physique. But yeah, if you you know you're spending. 15 bucks in the morning, like 30 bucks for lunch, 35 bucks for lunch. And then if you shout a friend every now and then, it's like you could easily punch for 100 bucks a day. Not a problem. Easily, easily. But I do find that, yeah, getting in shape for summer is definitely a good excuse to (laughs) to tone down. So bankstatements.com. Bankstatements.com. Good one. Um, Any other pro little hacks? What about, have you got um, any, like any other expense tracking apps or like savings apps or whatever that you recommend for people yeah well most of the the great thing about it most of the banks are actually coming on board with those expenses tracking apps yeah um for me my favorite will be ubank the yep. app is just fantastic for tracking your expenses yeah um but yeah those and it's are for ubank banks. customers only or yeah ubank yeah. customers only but yep. you could just log on uh, get your details and open up an account yeah just run everything through there yeah um other thing if you are really serious about saving having two separate accounts three separate accounts is definitely ideal yeah um because it, it it will curb your spending yeah if you you know if you like, read like the barefoot investor yeah thing, that's yeah, definitely that the one the buckets like, yeah, yeah, the buckets. yeah the buckets yeah um the other thing would be uh salary sacrificing to your super yeah because now as first home buyers you can access that extra bit that you pay yeah which is always a nice little thing yeah such a sexy topic to talk about. Oh, superannuation. <laughs> <laughs> Gets you going, doesn't it? <laughs> Love that. Love that. Um, you, just, you too can retire when you're 75. Yeah. But um, yeah. Mate, let's talk about um, one, of the, one of the privileges of being the trailblazer of the first broker as I thought we could talk about some fun stories. And um, yeah, so I guess I gave you a bit of a, tip of stuff i was keen to discuss but yeah just things that have gone well in in finance and things that haven't obviously probably just go to our, yeah. uh, our first favorite story yeah. well, how far on had we known each other when this happened oh was this I one of the first been, ones it would have been one of the first ones yeah yeah definitely a good introduction trial by fire <laughs> i think it's, it's definitely sort of the cornerstone of the whole relationship absolutely that, that. so <laughs> obviously yeah take take people back it was um yeah I'll let you try and... Oh, beautiful. I'll try and explain it. So we'd, um, with a, a, a young family, yep. husband, oh, sorry, single parent with a young daughter, there he was looking to buy his next home after separating. And um, he had a block of land that he was hoping to build on, but then that didn't end up working. And then we'd gotten everything in place, ready to fall into place. And we we're thinking, oh, fantastic. It's all lined up beautifully. And then what happened? The, was it the sale of the block? Fell through? No, so he, he'd bought, he'd, we'd sold a block of land for him. It had become unconditional. That's right. Which, this is where it's like he gets extremely unlikely. Um, but yeah, so the, the customer, we'll call him TJ. TJ, love it. TJ. Let's go TJ. TJ buys the, um, 
buys a, uh, sorry, sells a block of land. It's unconditional. So the cooling off had expired. The subject to finance had gone through, whatever. It was, it was unconditional. We are just waiting for settlement. So yeah. in that period, he went off and um, bought, bought another house, bought but he bought that else. unconditional as well. Yeah, so he, he bought that unconditional as well, which I think a lot of people would do. Well, it was a really competitive environment, so he had to sort of stand out a little bit. But like, I suppose there's no need to be subject to finance, I guess, because the, the money from the block was going to essentially pay for the new purchase. Yeah, correct. Um, correct. So, yeah, he goes out and buys that other one and settlements are rolling around. Was it scheduled for, like, simultaneous settlement? It was. Yeah. It was. So we get, like... Couple of days. It was yeah. I would say I would say within forty eight hours. It like, was when it so went. So forty eight hours before the settlement of the block goes to go through, we get a call from or an email from the purchasers' conveyancer saying that we're not in a position to settle, and they wanted like a month, yeah, or something to figure it out. Yeah, and we were like, what, what the we hell doing? has gone? Because he'd already here? given his notice to his, the rental agent too. That yes, yeah, so it goes from bad to worse. So he, um, so obviously you and I and his conveyance from that all get together and like, what the hell, why does this person need a month like to settle the block? And anyway, that, that particular perch that had just put their head in the sand around some finance issues yeah. that they had and they just thought, oh, well, we can just, you know, worst case scenario, we walk away from this block, it's a 5 or 10% deposit, just call it a 500 grand block for round numbers, so 10% is obviously yep. 50, 5% is 25K. Worst case scenario for that perch, so they were going to lose 25K, which is a lot, but it's like... You know, it's probably somewhat palatable for them in their situation or whatever. So, but the problem was <laughs> Jay had then, uh, the TJ, this customer, had then gone on and bought a, um, a property. Um, it's like a million bucks. It's about a million, million five. A million. So, yeah, spends a million bucks, pays a 10% deposit on that yep. particular property, and then he can't do one without the other. So, not only is he... Um, potentially going to, even if he got to keep the purchase's deposit for the block of land, which is call it 25K, and he's got a 10% deposit on a million, he's, that's he's 100K, a, yeah. so he's out of pocket by 75K. So that's not palatable. No, <laughs> no. And then he's up for the next, the other mill too. In yeah. In instance as well. Yeah. And then the worst part, obviously, with the ultimate kick in the nuts was when he said he was living, um, yeah, with, he had sole custody of his daughter. Yep. He had his mum also living with him. They'd given notice on a rental property that they were living in to coincide with all the stuff and move into the new house. Yeah, and there wasn't any wiggle room. Zero. No. They were having the other, the other tenants moving in literally the day after. Yeah. Um, that, that, to me, was single-handedly the most stressful transaction that I've ever been a part of. Like, I've had sediment you know, finance clauses that have gone out. I had an eight-week or a nine-week finance clause once, which was horrible, but this was the worst. Oh, it was – it consumed my life, I think, for a good two weeks during that time. It was just all I thought about, trying to think of different ways around it. Yeah. Even trying to look at even getting personal loans or something just to cover the shortfall. But, yeah, yeah, it was just – Because, yeah, just everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Like, you know, he had – be out of his rental and people were going to go into that rental and how what was the outcome how long did it take to get resolved it only took i think about an extra week yeah i think it felt like a lot longer it felt, than that. oh yeah, yeah but i think so that purchaser that was going to buy the block went and got like third or i don't know what the wording for it was but and obviously you didn't represent them but they got some it was like a guarantee or some sort. Where yeah, they just it was a very ugly finance situation. I think yeah. even back then they were paying like 18% or something yeah. like that to get this loan through from like a third or a fourth party lender. Yeah, like just was, yeah. almost private funding. Yeah, yeah, just to get this deal to go through. And yeah, I just remember thinking this is the worst. But to TJ's credit, like he didn't do anything that silly or that dangerous. Oh. It was just a combination of things going wrong that got him in that situation. Yeah, and I think only the way that we got through it too, or my personally, is because TJ was so calm. He was like, yeah, whatever, we'll, we'll see what happens. And I was like, if I was in your shoes, I'd be on the floor, fetal position, yeah. crying myself to sleep every night. Yeah, he, he, I don't know how he survived that. So that was a, a lesson and it's hard because I reckon I've done another 200 deals since then and I haven't really thought about it. But like if, you're, if the property you're selling is unconditional, like... You oh. can just buy another one unconditional. Like, oh, yeah, you who's going to like wait till that settles to then go on and buy something? Oh, you know completely. what I mean? It just no one does that. So no. you just think this poor guy is just so unlucky. Oh, exactly right. But it's uh, definitely been a that was an experience. 
Yeah. But I think it was also a great experience too. I think it just solidified the oh. sort of cohesion <laughs> that I think people are capable of. You're a, you're a machine. Oh. But I behind the scenes, I didn't even tell you, but I was like f- looking at my own finances like, can I? I was seriously thinking about buying that block of land <laughs> just to get him out of it. Do you know the crazy thing? So was I. Yeah. I was talking to my wife. I was like, can we swing it? I just thought, yeah. this is not right. This guy, like, you know, as I said, he's trying to rebuild after being, you know, oh. taken Taking, taking, to the cleaners, taking yeah. to the cleaners and he's trying to get going again. I'm like, this is not right. Like I, I spoke to my sister. I'm like, can I, you know, can we do and do it together? Yeah. I spoke to like builders. I, and then just luckily it came together and luckily it did because I think the land market, like after that, and that was the thing. Yeah. Cause that was the other thing. Remember we said to him, Oh, well, you know, I guess we'll try and find a way to sell it to someone else. But in, in the time that that customer had purchased that block of land and then, um, that deal had fallen apart or had almost fallen apart, that land had pr- probably dropped at least 10% of the yeah, value. So, yeah. like, we were always already going to, like, cop over, a loss, cop yeah. a loss, overpay something, but it felt better than him doing it because it yeah. wasn't his fault. But yeah, that was an oh, experience. Definitely, definitely. Thinking back, I, I think I've just blocked it out, to be honest. I think, I think man, and that's why I got so much respect for you because um, you and I were both, like, it was no fault of our own, but we were talking at, like, Seven, eight o'clock yeah. at night, yeah. six in the morning. Like we're talking, 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 thinking how. And I know you went to every lender under the sun. You yeah. tried everything. And luckily, and I didn't let this purchaser get away with this block of land. Like I kept the foot on the throat. I'm like, you were going to buy this. Like this is your fault. You yeah, know? Which, you, is, you, which is testament to that too, that you've followed through. I think a lot of other agents might have just been like, eh, it's okay. Figure it it's out not later. my or it's not my problem. It's, it's my like fault. it's a yeah. campaign. Yeah, it's not my fault. I knew it wasn't my fault. I knew it wasn't your fault. But it's not. That wasn't enough. Yeah, it didn't make me sleep at night. And the guy was moving to Melbourne or something, so I knew I'd pro- I would never see him again. And yep. selling a block of land like you don't actually meet the vendors selling blocks of mm-hmm. land. Um, it's usually just DocuSign. Correct. Yeah, you know, all yeah. over the phone. Um, and I didn't like look him up on social or anything because I didn't want to see a face. It would have made it worse. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was yeah, it was shit times. Oh yeah, but um, yeah, I guess you know the whole episode, the whole idea of the show is you know, spicy stories from you know from behind the scenes and things. So I yeah. guess like um, I was keen to hear if you've got. Um, luckily, you and I don't have any other ones like that, but I'm sure you've got other scenarios. I think one of the way one of the one things that wouldn't people wouldn't. Um, be surprised to hear is potentially what um how people's pre-approval situation and stuff has changed and yeah two incomes combined income of 200 or whatever could initially borrow this now they can borrow that and yeah. i guess yeah keen to hear what issues that's brought up for you and well that's a good good point because um especially over the last say 14 months where rates jumped up significantly it just, I think that was probably the biggest punishing factor was the last 12 months. Yeah. Um, is that some of the banks actually, even though they assess you for a pre-approval, they don't, if there are any changes, like an interest rate change, they don't, then that pre-approval is no longer valid. Really? They have to reassess. Really? Yeah. So we had an instance where a client had bought a block of land, they would assessed it then, but the land wasn't due to title for another six months. So you can't actually get uh, an approval on an un titled block you can't you can't uh depends on which bank you go to okay. but nine times out of ten you, you can't you can yep. go for a conditional approval and it'll be subject to the, the top block titling. Titling. yeah that's interesting so just then that's what i said you've got these all these other options that you can go through that's what makes dealing with a broker yep. a lot more palatable than dealing with a bank um but yeah that's the instance and she was building her first home it was really exciting everything you know parents had seen the block parents had seen the plans and, um, yep, comes to a couple of months before settlement. Oh, well, because we check regularly, we checked again in three months' time before the land was due to title and thought, we thought, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what are we going to do? You're, you're about 60K short. And to, in this current climate, trying to save up 60K in three months is near impossible. And, um, yeah, so that was, that was a bit of a scare. But the great thing about it is we we're able to find another bank that has set us at a lower rate. And they were happy to do a little bit, plus a little bit of help from mum and dad. And it was, we were able to get a secure, pretty great outcome for her. Get it over the line. Yeah, but that could have gone quite easily on the head of a pin, gone completely sour. Yeah. Have you had customers that have lost deposits? Oh, thank goodness. No, I haven't. That's good. Not, 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 not yet, but hopefully won't have to experience that. 
Um, yeah, I think that's that's probably one of the ones where it'd be it would take me right back to to TJ. Uh, <laughs> I think and TJ, sweaty just thinking yeah, about yeah TJ's wrecked me for life. Yeah. <laughs> so, so speaking of, um, I guess yeah, the market and everything like that, and how much things have changed. I'm I'm funny on people giving financial advice that aren't financial. Like I used to work at Bendigo Bank, and yes. there was guys that worked in financial planning that were renting and not rent vesting, like renting. Um, and I'm just big on. I think a, a job title doesn't make you an expert. You know, I, I yeah. think I only want to take financial advice from someone that I aspire to be like, or Correct. they've got multiple X's that I want. So um, one thing I think's really interesting about you is like a lot of brokers are on social media, like spruiking, oh, you know, still buy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But that's just because they want customers to transact because they get paid, right? Oh, so can you give, give people a snapshot of how you get paid and how it works. Yeah, okay. So we're paid in two lots. Right, so if we were to settle the mortgage or settle the loan, we get paid a percentage upfront as a upfront commission. Yeah, um, it's normally between say 0. 0.5 and 0.65 percent. Yeah, and then from there we're paid also a trail, which is a percentage as well. I think it's 0. 0.1 to 0. 0.1, oh, 0. 0.1 to 0. 0.15 percent. Yeah, on a monthly basis. Yep. Now that that's the reason it's brought about to so make sure that we're looking after you. Yep, constantly staying in touch with staying your customers. In touch. Yeah, exactly right. Yep. Making sure we're doing the right thing by you. Keep and because the bank wants to incentivize you to keep that customer with that correct bank. Yeah, yep. correct, and not just churn them and move them elsewhere. Yeah, um, yeah, that's that's how we're paid. Yeah, um, because I, I think like going back to um, people giving the wrong advice, like you've purchased in the last twelve months. Yeah, like correct. A, a lot of brokers, I don't think they're saying, oh, you know, like. Don't stop buying, but that's just because they want to keep getting paid. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, th I think they don't necessarily like believe in the market. And this isn't the show is not about financial advice and everyone do what's right for you. But um, you've you've been an advocate of still buying, of re course, regardless of because I think people are obviously really nervous at the moment. They don't want to buy and catch a falling knife. The property value is going to go down or whatever. But yeah, you've kind of put your money where your mouth is and you yeah. bought and like, I don't, we didn't come on to talk about your personal financial situation but like why did you buy in the last oh look <laughs> I think at the moment it was um, very much on the fact that we obviously had a growing family at that point as everything was feeling a bit claustrophobic so it was necessity more it was so a than... necessity yeah. we made those just, we wanted chickens we wanted dogs <laughs> And I mean, we're having we're just kids and then we're <laughs> just getting in out of the spaces. So yeah. that was definitely one of the, it was born of necessity. Yeah. Um, but buying in the market at the moment, I think it's one of those things. It does dip slightly, but if you follow the trend of property, it always sort of makes makes way, comes back and yeah. starts to grow again. Yeah. I think they call it a 10 year cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's just something I wanted to do. If you want to get into a position where you've got, I think it's a lot easier to build equity in a house. 60 grand say equity in the house used to run number then to save $60,000 and also the temptation to spend 60000 if it's sitting in the bank. I mean, yeah, you got motorbikes. Oh, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> that motorbike. It definitely it has been a challenge to the marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was more more like that and also having the space to, to, to you know, invest in more toys. Yeah. That's how I sort of market it to my wife as I say, it's an investment. <laughs> It's an investment. Exactly like right. <laughs> like that. Oh, dear. Um, I guess like, yeah, for you, what happens when customers ask you like financial advice type questions? Like what do you think is going to happen in the next 12 months? Like what are you supposed to say and what do you say? Oh, look, you can say it's you. Obviously, the first thing is I'm not an expert in this in the thing. All I can tell you is my personal opinion of what it is. But look, you need to go and do your own research. But if they come across, I uh, pay very much attention to the, like the banks, the CFOs, what they're all saying, you know, and um, just really what you see, read from the age and seeing what the market's doing overseas. Um, seeing what they do in America is probably the, the biggest flag because Australia follows suit. So in that instance, it's kind of like <laughs> I, would, I would always hand on heart say invest in property, invest in shares, invest in something because that's going to give you returns regardless. Um, and also, it's like uh, going to the gym. The more you do it, the better practiced you become. And then you just, yeah, by the end of it, you'd be a guru. You know, seven, what's it, seven forms of income, streams of income and retired 65? Yeah. Which is the goal. That's the goal. Um, yeah, I guess, like, it's, yeah, it's interesting. You're still buying. You're not too worried about 
um, the market. What's that saying? A lot of Americans are saying it. They're like, um, what is it? Um, marry the house and date the rate. Or yeah, that's what, it. Whatever it is. That's like, and it. obviously, what's your prediction of what's going to happen with in 2024 with rates? I reckon we will see it go down. I think it's it's too it's too high for too long. You'll it, with a straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, obviously, I'm not an expert in yeah. this space. So you, yeah, <laughs> you need to say that in every paragraph. Yeah. Um, but do you do you feel like so any more increases is definitely off the cards? No, I don't think. I think um, especially from the announcement that the RBA made last was it this Tuesday just gone by is they said they're holding fast, but there's they haven't said rate increases are off the cards. Yeah. There may be a further couple of rate increases in the future, but I don't think they'll be sig- as significant as the previous yep. few. 14. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Uh, the previous 14. But, yeah, I think in oh, gut feel is the next 12 to 18 months, we should see things start to dial back, maybe high fours, low fives. Yeah. Would be my sort of optimistic prediction. I think it's so funny how many people's expectations around a mortgage at, in the twos or the threes is like – you know, because we had those one nine nines and all that, people just got no idea. That's not normal. No, like, no, that five, was if yeah. Like my dad always said to me, if like if you're borrowing money in like the low fives, like oh yeah, get as much as you can, take yeah. as much debt as you can. But the, it's convenient that they, <laughs> my, my parents say that the same, but it's convenient that they know that the house cost them sixty thousand, yeah, as opposed to a million. Oh, that's bucks. that's a rabbit hole. We can go, <laughs> yeah, we can go down all that. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, like a can of coke. You know, it was five cents. Now <laughs> yeah. it's fucking four dollars. Oh yeah, and yeah. those you know the little bag of lollies that you could get. Yeah, that were five cents, and now they're what six dollars. Well, the bag? shout out to Lucky Phil on Autumn Street. There's a little milk bar there just up the road from my house, and he's still got the old fashioned like Does three for five really? cents. Mate, yeah, it's legit. Oh, okay, it's legit. Well, know where um, I'm heading after <laughs> after this. <laughs> oh, it's just nice for the, the old memories of the kid. I remember when I was a kid, like riding the. The BMX to the milk bar oh, and it yeah. took like, you know, a dollar and you had, oh, just think about those shopkeepers like, <laughs> yeah, what a <laughs> tedious little job. Some little kid that can, you know, three of these, <laughs> yeah. two of these. Like, and you yeah. never used to come with whole coins. It was always a five cent, 10 cent, yeah. 20 cent healer. They were just, yeah. Lovely, lovely people running those shops. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess predictions for 2024 for the housing market, I guess it's there. Maybe running in parallel, like with interest rates and and, and the market. Like, what's yeah. your predictions? You got any outlandish statements we outlandish can cut into a reel? And yeah, make yeah it? definitely. Houses are going to crash, but invest <laughs> in these three areas. And yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, I think I, I, I'd echo that sentiment. I think with rates going down a little bit, it might push a bit more confidence into the market. Yep. And I think we will see properties in specific areas start to go up yeah um but areas that had a boom during the covid that covid craziness that was going on a couple of years ago i think will start to sort of balance out mm. but overall we, then we're not, we maybe won't see the growth because they've they they would essentially have yeah, yeah they've already had their three or 10 years worth of growth in three years and now the next seven years might just be more of yeah, yeah like a stabilizing catching kind of, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah any things that you'd potentially stay away from I'm just trying to get you to put your balls on the line and say yeah, something outrageous, just, you know. I've got to, <laughs> I'm just hearing marketing in my head going, yeah. you shouldn't have said that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I can be like, the cats are going to win this year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You don't want to be that guy. No, no. I, I get it. I get it. But um, these views are your own. They're not yes, of uh, they're, anyone else's. Yeah, but. Yeah, but I'm not an expert, hence why I always come to you and be like, hey, oh. mate, what do you think? Yep. Uh, I don't know. I think, oh, look, houses, tan houses – Buy what you can, yeah. Because it's not, it's not, it's not going to be your forever property. Yeah. I think we bought thinking that house, uh, the other house that we had in Mount Dunedin was going to be the forever one. Yeah. And then we were there for sixteen months. Yeah. You know, it, life had changed so much in that period of time. I think two kids and a motorbike. Oh, and a motorbike. <laughs> no motorbike and then an upgrade. That was. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still married oh That's yeah look i think now she's just waiting until something happens so i've had to up the life insurance and all that too clever yeah. smart yep so they're mitigating factors right that's yep. all about brokers are uh, mitigating everything i like it um but yeah i think yeah what's you what's your take like i'll i'll do it for you i'm, yeah, I'm brutal on um <laughs> on the blocks of land like i just think land is absolutely nowhere at the moment it's so hard to move everyone's trying to nominate because you've got you know, blocks of land that people bought two years ago for 
this. Now it's worth this. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's there's a lot of pain. The building's gone up thirty or forty percent. Yeah. Um, lots of people just numbers can't work. Met with a broker. Um, miles off. Oh, completely, completely. We've been seeing a few just coming through recently. Yeah. House and lands where the land is coming quite a bit under. Yeah. Um, and it's just yeah, it's echoing exactly that. Just so what do you what do you do if like you got a customer that's like the when you for whatever reason um, the block of land isn't valuing up? Like, do you just try and get other vals or do you? Oh just, yeah. yeah, yeah. We order 10, 15 valuations, and yeah. whoever comes through as close as they can, we go through. Yep. Um, there's only been a few instances where we've had to sort of go and reach out and ask for parents for gifts. So parents going guarantor. Yep. Is definitely one of those ones that we're getting a few of. Yep. Um, just to help bridge the gap. Just, just to help bridge the gap. Because kids, they just don't have that cash. Yep. Um, and just from deals they signed up on 12 months to two years ago, their yeah. wage hasn't gone up, but everything else. like Oh, yeah. 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 And that's what's really... I the, think, r- the margin for errors is gone. It's gone. Yeah. It's gone. And everything is being tightened in terms of criteria and all that as well. Yep. Um, but that's that's probably where we'd be sitting. Yep. But yeah, no, I'd agree with your statement, but I'm glad you said it. Yeah. yeah. I think um, you d- we were talking the other day, you did have a good example of, um, so someone that had gone for the house and land package, yep. um, title was coming up, they couldn't get the finance, tell people about what what's an option rather than losing, if you paid a 10% deposit on a block of land, which I guarantee builders will start to be a lot... Um, Land sales agents would be a lot keener to see a ten percent deposit yeah. than a five percent deposit. But obviously, your customer that went through that recently, what how'd you get around that rather than losing the deposit? Yeah, well, what uh, what they did, I should say, is they um, ended up just turning it into an investment. Yep. So instead of purchasing it as their first house, they stayed with mum and dad a little bit longer, purchased it as an investment, and now loving it because they're still growing, so still feeling like they're moving forward. But then they can then leverage that to buy something bigger and better and beautiful yep. in the future. What about blocks of land though? That like, yeah, they were might have been pre-approved to do the house and land package yep. together, and then now you've got to separate it. Oh, those ones are a bit more heartbreaking. It's more of the fact is, can they service the block of land? Yep. Nine times out of ten, they can. And we just say, look, purchase a block of land, build a little bit of equity in it. Yeah, it's going to be a bit, bit tight for the next couple of years. Yeah. But then after that, we can look to get you into a new build. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is, uh, it's definitely not a, a fun subject to sort of deal with when you come across something like that. Mm. Yeah. But nine, uh, there are instances where we can actually go to another lender whose assessment rates. So I should probably should, because I keep talking about assessment rates, right? Banks will assess your loan at an affordability rate. So say your interest rate that they get you is 6%. Mm-hmm. Most banks add another 3% on top of that, and that's what they assess you at. But there are banks that actually assess you at one and a half or two times, which is just makes it a little bit easier in terms of capacity-wise. Yeah. Um, other thing is lower your expectations than you build. Instead of building that 550K mansion... Maybe build a nice little four better for two hundred and fifty ish thousand. <laughs> yeah, it's just from what I hear, it, it's just hard because obviously people are doing both. Like they're they're happy to downsize. Well, not happy, but they'll downsize the plan of the build that they were going to do. But cost of construction's gone just, up yeah, so much yeah. nowadays. Like you're spending the same amount and getting a far less quality or build. size house. Yeah, which is really hard. I think, it's, and it follows on from what you're saying, the last two years have just been this spanner that we've been dealing with and not really sure how it's going to impact the market in the next six to 12 months. Yeah. And then, but everyone made decisions back then and now they're a bit stuck. So it's just, yeah, just trying to find solutions. Yep. I uh, get that. Mate, thanks so much for coming on the show, obviously, and thank you for your generous offer of, um, you know, the, the gift cards and that sort of thing of people reaching out to you to do refinancing and that sort of thing. But my advice would be if anyone's, uh, not financial advice, but if anyone's <laughs> um, obviously taken out a loan in the, in, the, in the last 12 months and was looking at variable, like maybe now, what's your, like are you fixing, are you still thinking variable? Oh, you? I'm still thinking variable. Yeah. Yeah, variable gives you a lot more flexibility with your mortgage. Yep. Uh, 100% offset. And I think the big, the biggest thing is the difference. Maybe even I'll, I'll I'll send you the link. But even if they pop it on their calculator and they see the difference between making weekly, fortnightly, and monthly repayments, yeah, and how much you can actually save without having really done anything, yeah, it's huge. Sashin from Resolve Finance. If you need to reach out, what's your number? Oh four three zero eight three one eight zero two.
Amazing, mate. Thanks yeah. so much for coming on the show. Oh, and thank um, you. Yeah, and for supporting our listeners with that generous offer. And hopefully, uh, yeah, you can help out some people in a jam. Fantastic. Thank you for having me, Rick. Thanks, man. Cheers. Take care.